Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's time to learn the basics of owning a cordless drill. Hopefully you didn't just click on this video because you saw my face. <laughs> Hopefully you looked at the title so that you guys uh, who are way experienced don't need to watch this video, but tips and tricks you might be able to pick up. Even people who think they know everything can usually find something out because I know I learn something new every day. And that being said, let's get to it real quick. So what I have here, in fact, let me get my glasses. Um, little backstory, my father was a machinist and he worked in drilling his whole life. Not his whole life, I mean, sorry, his, his, the end of his life. The end of his work career. Um, he basically worked concrete drilling, a core company, which basically drilled giant holes in the cement, like if you needed a pipe in the street once the foundation was already laid, yada, yada, yada. Okay. He... Um, loved tools <laughs> he loved to be handy around the house this is a 12 volt cordless drill by dewalt what we had bought him was a bigger one that had got ruined in the flood and then of course uh, he had already been passed by then so when we were in the market to buy a new one we definitely wanted to get another dewalt so this is ours um just a really quick this right here is called the chuck if you have a really old drill, there'll be a little key to get the bits in and out. These are called <laughs> these are called bits. Anything that goes in it is a bit. Um, this is a screw bit. This is a Phillips head screw bit. This is a holder guide, and it's probably the best couple of bucks you can spend if you're going to do cordless drill. So this right here is an drill bit holder extension and guide with support so basically if you have a magnetic drill bit or or a screw bit a screwdriver bit and then you go ahead and put a screw on there that's capable of being magnetized aluminum screws won't be magnetized um, anything with steel or iron in it basically anything with iron in it and what it does is it you pull the shaft down so you don't have to worry about that wiggly nonsense that happens when you drill in it holds it in there and guides it in there for you so you're all set um, that is a great tip to have so really quickly this one came with this this is a it was a kit I got one time I just want to make sure nothing's gonna fall out okay I do have some extras in here and I have some things missing so there comes with a variety of tips so we have like there's like usually square or star tips there's Phillips and flatheads. Well, that's not a flathead. That's a big fat Phillips. Here is a star tip. No, that's a square. Um, and then these are like, um, like for ratchets and stuff. So you basically like if wherever you have a bolt, instead of using a ratchet, you have they have tips for those as well. And then they give you a variety of drills. And these drills have um, the hex bottoms. Um, already are ready to go it's it's a little safer to hold a drill bit with a hex bottom than just a round one um, but you still can just use one with a round bottom as well and this kit came with the quick chuck which is basically um, you once you put this in all you have to do is pull back on this to release different tips. So you push the tip in and it locks in place so I can't pull it out. You have to pull back on this so that you can pull it out. It's just another quick, if you're somebody who pre-drills holes a lot, if you're putting woodworking together and you pre-drill holes a lot, that's a nice thing to have. Okay. It also comes in a model like this. This is sort of the same kind of thing, but it's smaller. Okay, and you have to pull back on that to release the uh, the drill bit tip and stuff. Okay. So the basics are, let me show you really quickly. There is an end that's usually either round or hexed out like that. What you want to do, well, you don't have to open it all the way, but what you want to do is open the chuck. If I put... There's two buttons on the side, one's forward and one's reverse for backing screws out and pushing screws in and drilling. 
Okay, and on the top, there's different settings. So there's different settings by the torque of amount of pressure that it's putting on the screw. The only time I ever change it from drilling, so my dad always said just leave it on drilling, unless you have a soft screw that you might strip easily, then you're gonna go ahead and put it on a one, just to make it easier to slowly put that um, drill in. But depending on the, the torque of your, not all of them are created equal. Some are more powerful than others. Um, so depending on yours, I would go ahead and test the different settings. So as you can see, just get a scrap piece of wood. Get yourself a box of screws and a couple of drill bits and test it. Test all of the different torque settings. Um, but whenever you're drilling, you want it to be on drill. So you want the top to be set on drill. And how do you set that? That's easy enough. Mine is you sort of push in a little bit and turn, okay? And let's just get it back to drill, okay? And there's a little arrow on the top that tells you where to set it. Now it also has a one and two, which is also a matter of pressure. I don't ever keep it on two. Pop always said just keep it on one unless you're doing something heavy duty, which we don't really do heavy duty. Um, the other thing is there's the trigger. We talked about the reverses. And then the battery, I guess, is the last thing. This one has a battery um, charger. This one has a battery charger that you plug in like this. And it has the battery you remove from it. This one is Mom's. So Mom's has um, her battery charger is just little like this. And it's just attached to the plug. And you just do the same thing where you take the battery off. And you slide it into the charger. Usually it has some sort of um, like strips. You see the metal and you see the holes, how they correspond. So you just want to slide it in. Sorry, it's dark in here. You just want to slide it in and charge it up. Um, this one will tell you here, the indicator lights, what they mean. So every company makes their own unique systems basically so just because the black and decker one has this steady on flashing charging doesn't mean everybody will but that's kind of pretty common um but just check yours if you look it says right there on the charger what to look for okay this one that mom got came with one battery the set that i got came with a spare battery which I love having the spare battery because we were doing a big project like when we moved in and we had a lot of things to, to drill and hang up and put together. We didn't have to worry about waiting for the battery to charge. Okay. So I started to mention the chuck. This is the chuck and the chuck controls the drill bits. It's how it holds the drill bits in and out. You turn the chuck with your hand and what it does is it either pushes the, the fingers together, there's probably a name for it, or it pushes them really far apart. But the way I always have been taught to do it is to hold the chuck to put the drill in forward, and that tightens it down on your drill bit. Put it in reverse while you're holding it, and that loosens up the drill bit or bit. Okay, we're gonna get into some stuff here in a second. I just wanna show you different kits have different options. So this one is by Ryobi. When we lived in New York, my dad had a DeWalt, Jim had a Ryobi because he just is a man and wanted his own tools. But it got lost in the flood as well. It got damaged from the flood waters. So we were able to save his drill kit. This didn't get wet, this was up in a different spot of the house. Um, but what this is, is really nice. It's 31 pieces. It has different types of drills, drill bits, different sizes. Um, these one, these ones have like a funny top. That right there is a masonry built bit to get through brick and stone. Okay, so that's kind of important. They do get hot. My recommendation when working with a masonry bit is to take breaks frequently if you can't use a cooling fluid. I had a masonry drill bit jump out of the chuck and it 
I have a little tiny scar on my wrist. Um, and, and I got burnt, but, um, so this one is really neat because it also comes with a, an extension and this one wasn't very expensive. And again, this isn't sponsored or they don't, I don't get any kickbacks or anything. This is not, there's no affiliate links. Um, and then these, we always grow up, grew up calling them spade bits. What that is, is for drawing, uh, drilling little holes. Uh, there's actually something called a hole sore, which is actually looks like, uh, if you took like a tuna can and serrated the top like a saw and put it on a stick. But that's not what these is. This is for for smaller holes. And we've used these in our projects before. Um, let's see. Their standard sizes are usually in metric or common. Um, you know, so it could be quarter inch or it could be five millimeters. So it depends on uh, your set that you have. Um, and then this one um, is, I wanted to show it to you because it's from Workforce. I feel like Workforce is from Home Depot, but, and what this actually is, is a manual screwdriver with bits that are attached, and all of these will fit in the, the drill. Um, any small bit like this, I would use the extension, um, but any big bit, drill like this will fit right in there, okay? So I just wanna show you, sometimes you can find these cheaper, but think that, remember that you can use those in your cordless drill, okay? So mom's is the same and I will show you that's why I wanted to bring a different one to show you that even though her battery looks the same and the colors are different and her dial is different, it is all like the same sort of thing. You know, she has a dial that has drill numbers one through 10. She has forward and reverse right here at her fingertips or thumb tip depending <laughs> her trigger, her chuck all of the same components. So no matter what drill, a uh, cordless drill you do get, um, they'll pretty much be mostly the same kind of similar thing. Okay, that's what I wanted to tell you. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll get out a drill to pre-drill. This is a very, very tiny drill because I can't read the signs. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your chuck is open, possibly all the way. Okay, this one is open all the way. If you open it all the way, you'll see that it flops around in there. So what you wanna do is you wanna hold it, put it in forward, hold the chuck while you hold the drill bit, and slowly pulse until you feel a grab. See, look, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose, and all of a sudden it grabs the drill, and it grabs the bit. And then you hold it and pump tight, and you can feel it tightening down, okay? Now to drill, this is where the important, you always wanna wear eye protection when you're working with wood or anything that's gonna kick up dust. I think the most important tip that I can give you is to always try to hold your drill perpendicular to the surface that you're working on so that your hole goes straight in. If you're at an angle and you're purposefully using like an angle chuck or they have a, it's this guide that helps you do the corner blocks. Um, so if you want to, if you need to drill at an angle, do you see how it's dancing? So what we talked about this in the video before, you want to start straight down till you get a little divot and then you want to go ahead and attack at your angle that you're going for. Okay. And then when you back it out, I like to back it out with it running. It's always easy. It's the best way to do it. Um, and then you might have some bits on your drill so you can just shake them off. I don't, which is great. And then let me just show you straight up and down. You know what, I'm gonna show you straight up and down like this though, because straight up and down when you can't see. Can you see now? Okay. So we're gonna do perpendicular to the wood, and you're not gonna push hard, you're gonna let the drill do the work. And you don't push on the drill, you let the drill do the work. The drill, because it's like this, will walk its way into the wood. Just put slight pressure on it so you're not sitting there spinning in some sort of hard material. Okay, now to change it, we're gonna hold the chuck again. We're gonna put the drill in reverse and then we're gonna press the trigger and you see it becomes loose instantaneously. Okay, and make sure you put it back or your father wakes up at five o'clock in the morning because he can't find something. So now, I don't know if you guys can see if I turn it slowly. There's markings on that that tells you the size. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but I'll look when I add it, and if it's not, I'll just take it out. Okay, I think they're right here. So it tells you what size and stuff. 
and you see it's a Phillips head. Phillips head are easily noticed by their cross, um, the way that they make a cross. Flat head screwdrivers are kind of self-explanatory. They have a flat head. Um, I noticed that not very much stuff has flat heads anymore, but you might buy an old house that has flat heads still existing in them and you need a flat head to take it out. So this is how it looks without the extension. And you can see it's still a usable piece of material. It's not a problem. If you don't have the extension, you can still use it. It's not, this one is not magnetic as you just saw, look. Okay, so you'll have to hold the screw. What I like to do is get the teeth in there, start it in the hole that I pre-drilled, and then slowly, I like to pulse slow until I can get a good grip on it. Now you don't want to over drill. You don't want your drill bit to skip in your screw. Ready? Let's do that for you though. That. That noise right there is not good. What you're going to do if you keep doing that is you're going to strip your screw. So if you ever watched uh, late night TV selling stuff, they always have this thing that can remove strip, strip screws. That's how you strip a screw. <laughs> okay. So you want to stop when you have the most resistance. So now we're going to go ahead. Oh, I did that so fast. I'm sorry. So now we're going to go ahead and put in with our extension. We're going to hold the chuck while we put the drill in forward motion until it locks in. Let's get another one. Let me show you how to screw one in without pre-drilling a hole. Now this tip, this bit is magnetic. You see how it holds on? Oop. <laughs> Even when it falls, it holds on, right? It holds on to the screw. But this guide works like a dream. So I have a little hole here. I can just fit it right in the hole so you can see. I'm gonna pull the sleeve back, but you can see how I'm fitting it right in the hole. So pull the sleeve back and watch. Ta-da. Now, to remove a screw, it's just push in the reverse, get it lined up into the holes, and slowly back out. Again, very, very light pressure. You let the drill do the work for you. Let's show you that again. Very, very light pressure. Let the drill do the work for you, okay? So I just wanted to point out to get the right drill bit and shape and size for the thing that you're drilling in. So what I like to do is I like to take the bit before I even put it on the drill and take a screw out of the box and see if that works, um, if that's the right shape and size. So uh, just do that, you measure. But if you have one that's too small, it will just spin inside the, the X um, and then you won't be able to grab onto it. And if you have one that's too big, it'll skip on the outside of the X and you won't be able to grab onto it. So I hope this really helps everybody who is new to this. I've had a few messages after mentioning that I wanted to do this walkthrough real quick. And I've had a few messages where women are like, please, I got this for Christmas or I've got one for my anniversary or I got one because I asked for one and I'm intimidated. But really there's no need to be intimidated. My best suggestion is to get some scrap wood. These pieces of wood came under a piece of pastry from a bakery in St. Louis. <laughs> Aunt Sue brings them to church socials and then she brings the boards home for me. I use them for all kinds of things. So they're scraps to me and that's why you often see me drilling um, through into this so I don't drill into my table. It's kind of important. So I hope this really helped you guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. I hope I didn't miss anything. I tried to do it like thoroughly but quickly um, and if you haven't yet click subscribe when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video and share this with anybody you know who might be in intimidated by their cordless drill or corded drill for that matter the only difference with a corded drill is it weighs a little less because usually there's no big battery pack and older drills have key chucks which is basically there's a little weird almost like a skate key looking thing and a hole here and instead of opening the chuck like this and closing the chuck like this and tightening by holding it, it has a key that you can do that all with. So um, hopefully that helps because maybe your husband has an older model and you want to be able to use it. So, um, But thank you everybody for all your love and support. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.